a hello, a YouTube, and a welcome to another wonderful Joust building guide video. We have done warriors so far, as well as hunters. That's the other one we did. And today we are talking about assassins. So we had uh, three classes left to go, assassins, mages, guardians. And uh, yeah, it's been a little while since I did the last one. I've kind of been trying to whittle down the builds that I actually am confident in and I think are better relevant and are like, you know, good to share with you guys. And it's uh, taken a little longer than I would have hoped, but uh, I finally made it to a good spot with these assassins at least. So we're going to be talking about four different type of building styles. Assassins are a very flexible uh, role and class in Joust. But I think what you want to mainly focus on is actually playing that very assassin-esque role here when you do pick these gods in Joust, which is kind of like you go in, you get a kill, you get out. The only difference is you're going to want to be a little bit tankier in most cases in Joust just because uh, it's kind of like a constant team fight slash team battle slash like you know everyone's just uh, grappling for um, an advantage here or there in terms of the sustain department the poke department yada 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 so having a little bit of defense uh, goes a long way on these assassins and some of the characters can get away with having more defense and we'll be talking about exactly what that means and which characters can pull off a heavier defense build but in general we'll be talking more about a uh, higher damage based builds that will allow you to do your role of you know slaying someone and then also surviving within the joust map so the first build we're going to be talking about is going to be the classic this build has fallen off a little bit in the recent past in my eyes but it's still a strong build. Uh, if you've been watching the YouTube for a bit, following along, you'll notice that I've been doing this build quite a bit when I do play Assassins. Or at least last season I was during the you know solo queue to GM Jazz series and whatnot. And that will be the Bluestone Thebes build. A classic, classic build. We're going to be uh, using Kamazots to uh, illustrate this one. Let me mute my sounds real fast so we don't get owned by ambient god noises and before we start here the characters that use this build are pretty much every single assassin can pull off some variation of this build it kind of just is starter item thebes and then you just build a bunch of damage items as simple as that not not nothing complicated just you know you just get a little bit of uh, tankiness online early on and then you're able to just build your how you would normally build an assassin if you were to play like literally any other mode where you just build like a bunch of damage items so that you can uh continue that burst but you do get that thebes early just so you can uh, have a little bit more uh, survivability this season you can definitely change this bluestone thieves build into a warrior's axe thieves build by the way so on characters where uh bluestone isn't as impactful can definitely do that so like for example um, i'm not itching to build bluestone on fenrir i'm not itching to build it on like bakasura or like mercury like bluestone is for those characters that poke really well like you know like camisots and even him you can change that bluestone to a warrior's axe but it's a it's it's us it's up to you who you go bluestone on and who you go axe on but the starter will be the starting build will be bluestone your t1 thebes and then a whole bunch of potions uh, axe and a bluestone both cost 650 so you can get five potions up to you how you want to mix and match those i personally uh, prefer the health pots and the multi pots between the hp5 from the bluestone and the hp5 or the mp5 from the bluestone and the mp5 from the blue buff that you're going to get i find uh that the mana pots aren't as necessary and having some more health sustain is definitely preferred between the bluestone hp5 the glowing emerald hp5 this does have hp5 right yeah 10 hp5 and bluestone's got 10 as well i do believe it's got 15 
So you got 25 HP five built in right at the start and a bunch of health sustain. So that just feels really, really good for that first uh, couple minutes there where you're, you know, the red buff is going to come up and the purple buff is going to come up and all that. Your sustain will be looking really nice for those fights and you'll probably have more potions than a lot of the other people. So it gives you a lot more uh, survivability and ability to trade with that starting build. And then, like I said, the first item uh, you're going to get is just Thebes. And then you go full damage. So for Kamazas, what that looks like, or on any other ability, Assassin, what that looks like is usually you want to get a Jotun's Wrath for that big cooldown spike, as well as some nice early game stats with that flat pen, a little bit of power, a little bit of pen, and uh, for a very, very low cost of 2,200 gold, you're able to acquire that Jotun's Wrath. And if your character is good with Hydra's Lament, that item is also pretty solid because it's a little difficult to get all CDR through damage items on uh, these assassin guys. So Hydra's really good. Uh, Soul Eater is another option listed down here. And for other cooldown options, you could go something like Erendite if your character uses the item well. But yeah, a little tough to get like max CDR. It's not a make or break whether you get all the CDR. And then how you want to continue from there is you want to try and polish up your penetration as well as grab uh, something like a heart seeker just to give you a little bit more burst because then you're just basically you're just a really uh high damage bluestone brooch assassin going into the late game with just a very heavy pen build so something on camazots would probably look like this and the titan spain would switch out for a serrated and if you preferred you could grab a soul eater instead of a hydra's like this and create a build something like a really this would be a really heavy like uh sustain build if you were to go soul eater and serrated or if you just want like you know like i prefer myself like just maximum uh, dps so i, I kind of like the hydras the titan's bane and the heart seeker though you can like i said you can mix and match a bit here if you need like anti-heal you could get an earlier brawlers before your hydras you could even skip over the hydras and say 20 percent cdr is enough for me a lot of different ways to mix and match if you're against a really heavy uh, tanky composition, like say you're against like a Kulu, you know, his ult's going to give him a billion health, but he's going to make him, it's going to make him into a bit of an easier target to kill. A Kulu, like a um, you know, really tanky Achilles, a really tanky like a Cullen or something. You might want to get a chin size somewhere in the build somewhere. Uh, down the road, perhaps. And that would go down to your like fifth or sixth slot. Though you could even put it like right here in the build if you're really feeling it. Titan's Bane and Chin Size, very devastating combo for those enemy tanks. And that Chin Size would normally replace your uh, your Heart Seeker slot. Because it's kind of like the idea behind it is your Chin Size or your Heart Seeker turns into instead of uh, applying a bunch of damage, extra damage off of abilities you start applying a bunch of extra damage off your auto attacks. So depending how the game is rolling, like if you find yourself auto attacking a lot and you just want more auto attack damage or you just want to play a more auto attack style, you can change your heart seeker into a chin size and then instead of dealing, you know, that bonus percent HP damage with your abilities, you start dealing that bonus percent uh, HP damage on your auto attacks, kind of being, you know, kind of even out, do the same thing. And it becomes a really good time for you, hopefully. So... Yeah, that's Thieves' full damage build. Relatively simple, keeping it clean. Most assassins can use it. Fantastic, great. Hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, only other thing to talk about, I did forget uh, the relics and the consumables here. Most assassins are going to be looking for a, a blink beads type of thing, especially Camazots. Not all assassins need the blink. If you're going Thieves, you have a little bit of defense. You can flex your relic choices into uh, some more aggressive options since you have a little bit of safety from your Thebes if you want to. You could go something like a Horrific for a little bit more aggressive pressure. Meditation's fine. Uh, usually you don't really need the Sprint because you've got enough mobility within your kit. And it's up to you, really. I, I would personally recommend either Blink Beads or Sunder Beads with this type of build. And then if you really need it, you could grab Aegis if you're against some really heavy burst damage, like a Scylla or something. Usually those Mages and make a case for grabbing some of those but you do have remember that built-in protection from your thieves to kind of help you there 
And then consumable wise, you are aiming to deal pretty much maximum damage. So potions of power, 500 pots are very valuable. Buying that at certain junctures in the game can give you a big advantage where it's like just kind of a fight around fire. You got 500 extra gold in your back, could, could do something big. Uh, you'd be buying 3k power pot every time. And then uh, you do want a ward sometimes. All of these wards are useful in different scenarios that we may talk about in future videos. If you guys are interested, let me know. But that has been uh, the Bluestone Thieves build. We got three more builds to talk about. The next one is going to be basically the same build that we just reviewed, but cut the thieves. So this build is going to be a quite a bit more uh, risky because you don't have the safety, the fallback of that thieves to provide you a little defense, but you are going to build or, you know, have the option to build a defensive tanky item down the line when once you've fleshed out this build a little bit to give you a little bit more survivability so this is kind of the build that i've actually been preferring on uh, most of my assassins because it gives you a much heavier punch early so you get like a damage item first and you can really pick on those guys that rushed like gauntlet of thebes for example like i'm a full damage set level five got my jotuns i'm rolling up into uh, a Bacchus, who is a pretty tanky guy, right? But he's only level 5, and he's got a Thebes, and the Thebes has 3 stacks on it. That guy is very killable. If I had gone Thebes starter item set, and I'm rolling up in a level 5 Bacchus with 3 stacks on his Thebes, it's going to be a lot harder for me to kill him. So, the idea behind this build is just a lot more aggressiveness early, but you do have to play with, uh, you know, much more of that assassin mindset in that you are much squishier for much longer and it's a very exciting play style it gives you uh, a lot of different things you can do really following that assassin gameplay style of get in get a kill get out and you just like power farm clear waves as best as you can so the idea behind this build is just that and you could build this on people like a wheelix bastet camazots Kleena, dodgy hoonbots Lancelot, Loki, Nemesis, Pele, Ratatosker, Robin, Serket, Set, Susano, Thanatos, Thor, and Sukuyomi are the main ones we're looking at here. Uh, once again, you can swap out this Axe or Bluestone Pendant if you so desire. I just find Axe to be a little bit more consistent and a little bit safer early. Uh, you aren't going that Thebes, so you are lacking a bit on those prots, and this Axe is just so incredible for trading. It also helps a lot with... Uh, the mana sustain, which is something that you don't really realize until you play the build a lot. Because <laughs> this axe does give a very solid mana refund. 30 health and mana, plus 1.5 per level. Pretty nice. So if I'm just like walking around and set skewering people, set skewer is, you know, what's that? 40 to 60 mana? I'm regening practically all of that if I'm only solely, solely using the skewer there. So the sustain is actually pretty nice, and if you, you know, play your abilities well and don't just, like, willy-nilly throw them out there, your mana sustain will be quite good with just an axe. So the start here is very similar to the, you know, the Bluestone Thebes start. You just go Warrior's Axe and a Mace, because you're not going to go Thebes. So it just, you know, just skip over the Thebes, and then you just rush into full damage. Finish a Jotun's Wrath first. You could rush Brawlers if you want first. I've actually been liking that a lot if you're against a decent amount of healing. Brawlers does give a pretty heavy damage spike in comparison to the Jotuns. Five extra penetration on there and 10 extra power. So you lack 20% CD, which is a big deal. But like I was talking about, if you're trying to all in that level five Bacchus that has, you know, three Thebes decks, that five pen and 10 power might come in handy. And that 20% CDR probably isn't going to do very much if you're just all in a guy, right? So definitely something to consider on that Brawler's Beat Stick, but you're not even going to build that every game because you probably don't want to build that unless they have a decent amount of healing. So usually you're just rushing into Jotun's Wrath. And then Titan's Bane and Heartseeker are in the core section here. Uh, those are super nice poke assassin items. So most of these characters that are going to use this build are very good at the poke thing because they kind of just go in, one-shot you, and they get out. That's uh, you know the idea behind it. That's why I think we got things like Bastet, 
nemesis pele like you know sir Ket on here like most of the time the assassins are pretty uh kitted out to do uh the whole get in kill get out job and that's why this build is so effective on them so it just focuses on getting your damage early so you'd probably go something like jotun's if you're a good hydra's god you go hydra's but uh, i don't find set to be a very good hydra's god so i'm looking more along the lines of like a brawler's titan's bane type of deal and that titan's bane's super good if you're against the multiple tanks just provides so much pen and then if you're still again need uh, more tank shred you could grab a chin size later on it's just a really good time and then you have like one flex slot where you can grab uh, any of these defensive options obviously transcendence is not a defense item but i ran out of slots so <laughs> the uh, titan's bane is there or not the titan's bane the transcendence is there and you just get to mix and match really for your build here you want to focus on damage first like I said, so these are four core items that you want to consider. If you need anti-heal, you're getting this. This is kind of a staple, the Jotun's Wrath. Very cool down. Titan's Bane is just an incredible pen item, though that can be swapped for Serrated Edge if you uh, are interested in uh, just having the stat stick from Serrated. I personally like the Titan's Bane a lot more if your character has good poke abilities. And then we've got Heartseeker here, which is... Kind of the same deal, really amazing poke item, though that can be swapped out for kind of similar to the Blue Stone Thieves build. It can be swapped out for a chin size. And then we've got Soul Eater here, or if you're like a bad Hydra's character and you just want like a lot of cooldown, or if you want to get max cooldown, you can build both. And we got Blood Forge here for if you find yourself getting a lot of kills and you think that you can just like get a kill and snowball a fight to a victory. Uh, once again, the chin size is there just as a kind of a replacement to the Heart Seeker if you're against a lot of tanks. Somebody like Set can uh, super utilize a chin size against characters that have really really high base health and if you're playing against you know kulu achilles which is a relatively popular team composition right now i've seen it a number of times in these higher up joust games chin size goes absolutely crazy against really heavy tank comps like that if the kulu commits with ult and you just go in as set with a chin size on him like your ganesh drops an ult behind you like Ooh, baby, you are going to be cooking those guys. And then I've got a uh, Transcendence, which is meant to be under the damage uh, tab. But like I said, don't have space for it. I really find this useful on characters that are really heavy on that burst and don't use the Hydras as well. Or, you know, I don't really want to build Soul Eater, for example. Like, it's just kind of like if you have an extra slot and you want the biggest power spike that you can possibly get. So let's say, like, I'm building set here, right? I got Warrior's Axe, I got Jotun's. I don't feel like I really need Brawlers. They've got two tanks, so let me just slap a Titan's Bane just to get my early pen out of the way real fast. And then, like, I don't really know what to go. So uh, maybe I just want, like, just much, as much raw power as possible. I could even swap the order on that, too. And then this type of build will just allow you to shred through targets crazy hard, right? Or if I find myself taking a bit too much damage, I could even swat, slide in one of these defensive options now which is what we're talking about next, is these three defense items, Spirit Robe, Mantle, and Magi's. You're typically only going to be building one of these in any variation of this build. You're kind of just mix and matching these nine items here, the Jotuns through Transcendence, and then you're just kind of like throwing one of these on if you think that you need it. You don't always need it, but if you think that you need it, then you get it. And uh, sometimes... If you start finding yourself running out of item slots, like let's say you need, say you need the brawlers, you just want as much pen as you can get, right? I'm working my way down here. Let's say I had to grab a, uh, I grabbed myself a transcendence, for example, and then I got this, but then like, I'm just getting CC'd and insta dying. It is completely fine to sell your axe, particularly since you're not building a whole lot of damage or a whole lot of tankiness. That thundering axe loses a lot of value, and I'm not building an axe of animosity. So it is 100% a powerful decision to sell your Warrior's Axe and grab one of those three defensive items. And that's something I really like about this build is you do have a little bit more flexibility with your slots when you sell the Axe. Alternatively, what you could do is you could keep the Axe and because you're going to, if you build especially either Spirit Robe or Mantle, you could uh, upgrade the Axe into Sunray Axe and have a little bit of an extra punch on that Axe because you've got a little bit more tankiness. So this would be especially effective if you're against a lot of tanks. 
and you want to make sure that you can stay in the battle long enough to kill them, you could go something like this. Like, if I'm against that, you know, that devastating Kulu plus Achilles combo, for example, I might consider going, like, one defensive item with my mantle, finish my axe, and then just have full shred for them on the backside to just take them out of the game. And then the only other thing to talk about with this build is uh, relics and consumables. We just are mainly going to be going purification beads and Aegis because this build is a bit lower on the protection side of things. So you're going to be opting to play as defensively as possible with your relics. So you could go blink if you're more of a blink character. Like if you're playing like Thantos or something, the Aegis probably isn't as necessary. Or, you know, just there, there are assassins that are just better with uh, blink than others. Like a nemesis is a really solid blink assassin versus Thor, who I'm going beads ages on every time, right? Camas out, I'm always going blink because he's just so safe. Don't really need the ages that bad. But it really is up to you at the end of the day which of those relics you decide to go for. But those are the main three are the beads, ages, and the blink. And then as far as consumables go, since this is a more of a damage focused build, you're pretty much always going with the 3k power pot. And then you're getting that 500 pot whenever it's uh, suitable. And then don't forget your wards. So that'll do it for the uh, Axe Slash Bluestone full damage build. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. We'll be moving on now to the third build of the day. This one is going to be a bit more of a niche one. You're here for the Bakasura build tech. We will not be talking about Bakasura. Anyway, back to the third build where we'll now be talking about a more niche build like i said and that's going to be the hybrid rune forged build so this is a build that you can use on those assassins that really abuse that rune forged passive that plus 15 percent extra damage can definitely use it on a character like naja red tosker uh, we got robin can kind of use it i wouldn't recommend it on him though uh, we got Sirket. Susano can kind of use it, kind of in the same similar fashion to how Robin can use it. But he can use it, so <laughs> we will mention him. And then Thantos can use this build. Thantos is a pretty solid uh, Runeforge character. Our problem child for this build is going to be Sir Ket. Really, really easy application of Runeforge with her Cobra's Kiss or with her Last Breath ult here. And uh, Sir Ket is very particularly a strong Runeforged assassin because she is a non-conquest balance buff where she takes 10 percent less damage and here's the big one as plus five percent damage to gods so she already has uh like a 33 percent built-in rune forged into her kit all of the time against gods so when she gets a rune forged proc sir Ket actually is dealing 20 percent extra damage to gods instead of 15 which is a little ridiculous Stack that on top of, you know, a Sunder Charge, giving her 7.5% more. She's doing like, you know, 27.5% extra. I do believe you can stack the Sunder Charges up to twice, right? No, you can't. It only takes a little bit of increased damage. Sundering Blast. Let me, let me read this. Make sure. Let me see. Right. Yeah, it just has two charges. Never mind. Never mind on that. But you can get a lot of extra damage on the circuit. You know, stack a lot of different... Uh, item effects, Spear of the Magus, uh, freaking, what else is there? Damage increase items. There are more that I can't think of right now. But Runeforge is the big one, having 20% increased damage. Esther Ket is pretty crazy with all of the uh, extra damage she has built into her through her passive and whatnot. So the start here is going to be uh, the Warrior's Axe, the Tier 1 Runeforged, and then you're going to roll out with two health pots and two multi pots. Uh, you could adjust this as necessary through your games. Maybe you find that you like a 3-1 split more. Maybe you find that you like having mana pots. But the way I found with this particular build to work out really nicely, a good baseline starting point is two health pots, two multi pots. You've got a little bit of sustain from your axe. You have zero sustain from your tier one rune forge. This item super glows up when it gets to tier 3, but the tier 1 and tier 2 have zero sustain stats on them. I mean, I guess they got a little help, but as far as HP 5 and MP 5 go, you got nothing. You're only working off your axe procs. 
So you're going to be needing a little bit more in the mana department, especially from those multi-pots. That blue buff will help out as well, the blue buff aura on the Joust map. Uh, the core to this build is kind of just a Runeforge Hammer, obviously. It is a Runeforge build. And then since it's a hybrid build as well, we're going to prioritize getting a little bit of CDR uh, through power on the Jotun's Wrath there. And then Stone of Binding I have up here. Not exactly a core item, but honestly, I ran out of slots. So it would probably be more appropriate to place Stone of Binding a little bit over here off to the side. <laughs> it's more of a, a situationally defensive slash damage item. The main core to this build is just Runeforged and Jotun's Wrath. And then if you want uh, more damage, you can consider going any of these options. Sphinx's Bobble is obviously something that you're going to be putting towards the end of your build or when you're getting that 50% CDR. Uh, Sir Ket is kind of the Deathbringer god. You wouldn't really be building this on any of the other characters that use this build besides maybe Naja if you're feeling it. Because uh, they both have built-in critical hit chance that makes uh, the Malicious Deathbringer a little bit more attractive. Uh, Arendite can be a nice little spicy power choice to give yourself a little bit more chase down potential. But the defensive items are really what we're going to be looking at mainly here. Right after you get Runeforged Jotuns, this is a hybrid build, and we're going to be building hybrid items. And these days, you don't get power and protections on the same item, so hybrid items look like Stone of Binding. They're just defensive items that give you more damage through passives. Stone of Binding is a really solid one. Archroot's Fury is really solid. Erosion is really solid when they have a lot of shields, like a Charon. Or if they're building a lot of shells, let's say you have an Odin on your team and they're going like triple phantom shell. Erosion could be a nice pickup for at least one of you. Uh, Void Shield is a very nice uh, boon to increasing your damage as well. So Circuit build finished might look something like uh provided there's nothing i need to like super counter build against i might end up going runeforge jotun's arc druid and then i want to finish my cooldown so i might grab even i'll put a pridwin on here actually forgot to put that item on there pridwin here and then maybe slap uh, a stone of binding or an erosion for if they have a lot of shields you know like something something like that or if i didn't really want to go pridwin i could go like double cooldown items like this I did go Pridwin, another item to go with that would be like Void Shield. So you can really mix and match a lot of these different items depending on what you want. The main thing is uh, finishing up your CDR and then making sure you got enough damage in your build through the defensive options that you choose. And one really big thing is uh, about Arc Druid that I find so good for this build that actually tempts me to put it up into this core section. Heck, let me let me at least switch these two, you know, that, that might make more sense. It is uh, Arc Druid. It does a burst of magical damage, right? When you auto attack, you store up some damage. It's kind of like a kind of like a thorns, more controllable thorns, right? Gain a stack each time you take damage from enemy gods. Blah, 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 and then your next basic attack will deal bonus damage, right? So the thing about that is the damage is increased off a of Runeforged. So if I get max stacks on an Arc Druid, and I roll up to a fight, I blink in a circuit, right? I taunt someone. Taunt a carry, let's say. Get a quick little surprise onto the enemy on her, a little blink taunt. He might pop his beads and then impale me away, but maybe I pop my beads and I get off like one auto attack on him. So let's say I got a Runeforge proc down from that blink taunt that he ended up beadsing after the fact. And then I get my auto out as I'm using my beads. So I, I blink in, I pop my beads after my two as he tries to impale me away and I get like one auto and then he like jumps away to create, create space probably. But just that one auto that one auto from the Arc Druid proc is going to get the auto attack damage. Maybe I hit him for like 110, right, with my auto attack. <laughs> but my Runeforge proc is going to make my Arc Druid's proc do more. And then I've got that non conquest buff, which is 5% extra damage. So my Arc Druid is going to be doing 20% extra damage. I might just whap that guy for a, an 110 damage basic attack plus 400 damage Arc Druid. 
which is crazy to think about. <laughs> so, this item is very, very powerful in combination with Runeforged, suffice to say. And that's the build. You just uh, get the Runeforged, the Jotuns, and then mix and match these other items. And usually trying to incorporate an Arcdruid Fury in there somewhere. So, like I said, a typical build for me would be something like... Something like this. Pretty good. Pretty solid. And then if you felt like you wanted more defensive items, you could shift it up and do something like that. But like I said, the main thing is finishing your CDR and then just really playing off of your Runeforged procs. Would be absolutely huge. Uh, relic choice wise, you're going to be going uh, Blink and Beads and Sunder. Those are kind of the like only only three things you're looking to do. You're really trying to just like feast on carries with this build. And if feasting on carries becomes a little bit of an impossible task, you could change up your strategy to be feasting on tanks. This will require um, more effort from the rest of your team members, of course, because you're not going to kill them alone, not with a build like this. But you do have very strong tools to allow your carry characters to hit harder. So let's say, for example, you end up committing to a more of a tankier uh, focus down the tank's build path. And your Sirket ADC Guardian, you're like, I don't know, like Cabracken, Sirket, and like on her or something, right? Uh, you itemize so that you've got max CDR. And a lot of shred for your on her. You've got Runeforge passive to give him extra damage, and you've got Void Shield to make him do extra damage. And then instead of going uh, beads blank, you go beads sunder. And then you taunt their Achilles. The Achilles has a Runeforge proc appear under him. He's got a Void Shield on him. You sunder him. The on her throws up his pillar. You ult him. The guy's gonna insta die. <laughs> The chin size procs will be hitting him for 120s from your honor. So there are a lot of different ways that you can opt to play the fights with a build like this. And it's kind of all enabled uh, by the Runeforged. Just utilizing that Runeforged to either one shot a squishy in the back with an Arc Druid or to uh, focus down tanks by taunting them towards you and then sundering them and having your teammates uh, clean them up. Though you'll still be doing a decent amount of damage to them as well because of the Runeforged. And as far as consumables go... Uh, we're always going to want to be picking up that Chalice of Healing, 500 Power Pot, and then some, this is a more of a defensive build. Even though it's a hybrid build, uh, the defense pot ends up going a lot further than the uh, 3k Power Potion. 3k Power Potion really, really goes hard if you have a, a lot of power, and we do not have a lot of power. So 3k defense pot pretty much every time. And then, of course, don't forget your wards. All right. There's only one more build to talk about possibly my favorite build these days if you watched the warrior building video you already know about this build it's a wonderful build it is the wukong build but in this instance it is the thor build this is uh very, very fun build. You can use it on Thor. You can use it on Sirket, though. I prefer the other Sirket build that I just showed. And you could use this on Naja. This operates very similarly to the last build. But it is less of a hybrid build and more of a tank build. It does very similar things, though as the last build does, just it's a lot simpler and a lot more focused on having defense items. So same start, Warrior's Axe, Cudgel, Health Pots, Multi Pots. Uh, you have a massive glow up when you finish the Runeforged. And this build really shines on characters that can play really, really safe, like Thor and Sun Wukong. So that's why it's kind of a, almost ex a Thor exclusive and why I have like kind of a different route for Sirket that I recommend. For this build, very simple. You just go Runeforged, Glad Shield. It gives you a ton of sustain. Bunch of HP5, bunch of MP5. This really solid trading, which is perfect for Joust, this type of build. And then you want to be getting as much CDR as possible with that Pridwin. And then you go that Arc Druid, which is a really nice uh, combination with the Runeforged, like we talked about. 
and then you just finish your CDR with a mantle. And it just, it's just very, very nice and simple. Of course, you finish the axe into a sundering axe on any of these variants. You'd be finishing a warrior's axe into sundering axe in any of these builds. Uh, for relic choices, as we talked about, it's uh, really good at playing that kind of uh, same role as uh, the hybrid Runeforge build that we just talked about. So almost always going for Sundering Spear and Purification Beads. Blink is another option, but especially on Thor, not really necessary. That wall goes very far, like 70 units on uh, that waller, right? It's a pretty crazy range already from the Thor. Don't really need the Blink to find that. And more often than not, with this build, you're going to be probably trying to go on tanks first. So you can focus them out, play Thor with an ADC, and do that kind of same thing that we just talked about, where you're, you're going to wall them in, you're going to proc a rune forged, you're going to hit them with a Sunder, and then your ADC is going to hit them too. And they're going to die. <laughs> so whether that's a Ho Yi marking them and then getting a double bounce off your wall, whether that's a on her getting a stun against your wall, there are a number of ways to do it. Whether it's an Uther combo comboing off your wall, plus your Sunder. They are just going to be doing infinitely more damage because of uh, your Runeforge plus Sunder combination that you're building for them. And at the same time, if you find that backliner, you can also solo him. <laughs> you catch him with a wall, and if he doesn't respect beads that, you're hitting him with a Sunder double tap, teleporting in and whapping him for a 350 over the head with your Archdruid. And then you're ulting. And the guy will be 40% health or lower, and then you can either turn on his tanks, and he's very uncomfortable coming back in, or you can, you know, look to chase him down further. So it looks real, real good with this build. Uh, very similar consumables slots to all the other hybrid builds. We're looking into 500 pots, which are very strong, and then 3k defense pots, since we don't have much power. And then, of course, always remembering to ward. And that has been all four... Styles of Assassin builds that I would recommend for you guys to build in Joust these days. A couple notable things is we didn't talk about auto attack Assassins, like really heavy, dedicated, uh, basic attack centric builds. And that is because I think if you want to play a character like that, you should just play a Hunter. Uh, auto attack Assassins are not super meta relevant right now. Like stuff like Arachne and Baka and, you know, things like that, Kali would probably be the, the best out of all those options. Uh, not the greatest build path to be an auto-attacker assassin guy. Uh, we could talk about it, but honestly, I wouldn't recommend it, so we won't talk about it. And then uh, the only other one is like full tank assassin. We talked about some like more hybrid-esque variants of assassins instead of full tanks. But I would also, once again, not really recommend that. I had 100%... Uh, lean more into the the thebes full damage or you know the axe full damage or just just damage is just so much more effective on these assassins maybe in the future we'll see the return of very tanky fenrir but until that day comes we're going to leave it out of the assassin building guide and kind of only uh, recommend you guys things that i find very strong and builds that I found very effective that you guys can utilize that I'm very confident in in your Jazz games. So, yep. Hope you enjoyed that one. Learned a thing or two about Assassins. Maybe found a build or two to try on a, your favorite god. A new new inspiration type of thing, right? Uh, let me know what you guys think of these builds in the comments. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to uh, leave a like on the video if you did. And subscribe to the channel for more. And I will catch you. On the flip. Waiter.